Hey, Dr. Poki. Medical doctor, what you call they do business? Hey, that sometimes people ask me, why did you bother to go and study medicine? Because I wanted to be a businessman. And studying medicine was the easiest way for me to break from the yoke of poverty. I was able to quickly um, set up a private practice. As I told you, I set up my first practice when I was 29. I hate poverty. I hate to beg. I hate to depend on people. I hate to introduce myself to people. People should know me for my product and for my services. But I'm introducing myself to you here. I'm your friend, Dr. Charles. <laughs> My granddaughter calls me like that too. So it's, it's very interesting. Now, one of the businesses you can go into is wholesale of drinks. Wholesale of drinks. Religious people live, live here. Wholesale of drinks. Now, if a child is born, they will drink. If a child the dedication ceremony, they will drink. The child uh, wants to marry, they will drink. The child does thanksgiving for his own baby, they will drink. People drink, buy drinks on a daily basis. On a daily basis. Particularly in Africa, where they like celebrations. Particularly my people, they like enjoyment, they like celebration. So, if you sell drinks wholesale, what you need is a piece of property you can rent in the beginning. Rent a warehouse, rent a store that is close to the road, along the road. And have in mind that maybe five to six years time, you will buy um, a building, knock it down and buy a build and build your own shop there. So you register with the companies to be a distributor. You go to their factories. You mu you you will need to get a panel truck of your own. But I've been observing people. These companies come to supply them. They come with their pickup trucks to supply to these distributors. In fact, for you to have their logo or advert in your shop, they pay you. They pay you a lot to have their logo in your shop. So if you have a good relationship with them, they can even supply you goods far in advance, I mean, um, with trust capital, and then you will pay subsequently. Most stores, most big shops, these people bring their products, you finish selling and you return money. You return money. And you can easily monitor that business if you have CCTV camera and do a lot of your transactions in such a way that you have a system of getting the cash or transfers and remitting it to your bank. It's a business that will endure from generation to generation. And the good thing is that you have a multiplicity of products. Even if you are a religious person and you say you don't want to sell alcoholic drinks, there are a lot of soft drinks without alcohol that you can sell. It is a profitable business. There is only one challenge. Drinks are heavy and you might not be able to carry them. So you will employ young men who will be helping you to offload and load. You might not put them on permanent salary but it would be better if you put them on permanent salary because they will be there all the time. And if you don't put them on permanent salary, if they migrate away, when you need them, you might not see them. 
Then the challenge, another challenge is breakage. Maybe falls from somebody's hand and all that. As much as possible, if you train people how to carry those things, the drinks, your breakage will be reduced. And you can sell water in addition to that. But one thing I always tell people, when you do a business, don't have a monorail approach. As you are selling drinks, there are other businesses I can teach you that you can be doing inside where you are selling drinks and you will get money. Then if you sell drinks, you discover that your peak periods, you must talk for your peak periods. Easter, Valentine, New Year Day celebrations, Christmas celebration, Independence Day celebration. They will always buy drinks. It's something they buy regularly. And try as much as possible to be always open. But at the same time, learn to close early in the evening because of security reasons. So then you must secure your products, secure your products, secure your warehouse. Sometimes in my country, apart from the metal protectors in the windows and doors, the ceilings, you need to put metal protectors in the ceilings so that nobody can break through the ceiling into the, the store and carry drinks. Some drinks are very expensive. One bottle of drink, I've seen a bottle of drink that is 100 and something thousand. Some drinks can be very, very expensive. So you must, you must have security. If it is your own building, you can deck it. In the interim, if it's another person's land that you leased, you can put a 40 feet container, 40 feet container and secure it very well. So that's business number two, wholesale of drinks. No matter where you locate it, it will do well. Local government headquarters, it will do well. Uh, big city, it will do well. I remain your friend, Dr. Charles Apoki. Share this video to our people in the diaspora, those within Nigeria, and subscribe to this channel. It's so unfair. I spent a whole day sitting down here doing these videos. You enjoy them and you don't subscribe. That's not good enough. Subscribe to this channel, share, and then support this channel. There are caps you can, you can contribute. $5, $10, $20, $5, pounds, $10 pounds to this channel. And it will go a long way. God bless you. I remain your friend, Dr. Charles Apple Key. One lady calls me Apple Key. <laughs>